Next question is from Michael M 247365. If you were okay. programming a full body routine, what primary exercises would you build it around and how would you rotate in other accessory exercises? Now, this is someone I picked this question and I only picked it because it had like 17 or 20 likes. So mm -hmm. it would because I feel like don't we talk about Do you this? Listen to the show. Yeah, I'm like, don't yeah. we talk about this all the time? And uh, every single program is built um, around this. I felt like we addressed this. But again, if there's that many people that are liking it, I feel like that many people need to hear it again. That I think, all, and I had this same conversation this weekend with my family, is there are certain movements that I think should be staples and in, and stay in your routine forever. And that's like the big the big four or five, you know, your squat, your deadlift, your overhead press, your bench press, a barbell row. Like those, those five movements, I don't think ever should leave your routine. I mean, there's so much that you can do with manipulating tempo and rep ranges and rest periods mm -hmm. that you can still make it feel novel, but and it, it's so complex and it gives you such a big bang for your buck that it should remain in there. And then all the other little things uh, is what we're rotating every four to six yeah. weeks. And I'll add a few exercises to that. I think uh, a pull-up and a dip uh, belong in mm -hmm. that. I think uh, a windmill belongs in that because it's uh, it's a it's a type of rotation I think some type of a split stance lower body exercise like a lunge belongs in that and I do think some kind of a lateral movement probably belongs in that whether you're doing a, a sled pull and you're walking sideways mm -hmm. or you're doing like a lateral lunge or a Cossack squat probably belongs in there um, so you've got all your bases covered if you do all those exercises I mean the big movers, the big muscle builders, the big bang for your buck, speed up the metabolism, build muscle exercises are the ones that, you know, that Adam named, right? Your bench, deadlift, squat, overhead press, barbell row, like those always are going to be the exercises that build uh, the most muscle, but they don't, they're not complete, right? There's no rotation in those movements. Um, There's no unilateral in there. That's there, where, you know, if you follow the RGB, like so the red, green, and black. Yeah, MAPS anabolic, mass performance, MAPS aesthetic. You, you got hit, all of it. You hit all of that. Yeah. Like, and that's the, uh, you know, I remember when that we- That was the point of it all. Right. I remember when we first wrote performance that it didn't have as, it didn't sell as well as black and red did when we first launched, but I can't uh, can't make the case enough for why that belongs in the rotation because of what Sal is talking about right now mm -hmm. is that program puts a ton of emphasis on multi-planar movements and then also rotational type of exercises and also unilateral type moving and even some yeah. explosive stuff, which I think those things do belong somewhat in the rotation. But even then, it, that, that program doesn't get away from any of the big lifts that we're talking about. All those big lifts are also there. Inclu yeah. included in that. That's right. And the best that, the best workouts include those uh, those exercises. You really can't replace them. Now, you can find exercises that work the same muscles. Um, you can find machines that work the same muscles. But you can't replace uh, a barbell squat. You just can't. You can't replace a row. Um, there's nothing that'll replace that. Anything you try to replace a row with is a row of some sort, right? Yeah. An overhead press. You can't replace an overhead press. You have to do an exercise with the resistance where you reach up above your head. There's nothing to replace that. And any machine uh, that, to tr that attempts to do so is going to result in less strength, less muscle, less results. And yeah. even any combination of machines, you can find... Find me the next four most effective leg exercise machines, and those four combined yeah. are not going to give you the same results as just the squat. Well, there's always going to be people out there trying to argue for different points of, yeah, of like different types of uh, machines that have just as much impact and this and that and the other. It just reminds me of the conversation we had with like, I think it was Max Schmarzo where he's talking about the, the, the sauna and, and you know, the benefits of the sauna is that it's an exercise like emulator. Like it's, it, it heats up the core temperature of the body. It makes the body think that it's done, you know, work, but it has not. And yeah. so, you know, you may get like a, a fraction of the benefits from it, but you're not going to get it unless you actually do the real thing. Right. It's like supplements. Okay supplements uh, can have some value, but they can never replace food. They just can't. There's, it just will never, I'm dealing with this with, with Jessica, right? So she's third trimester and she's not anemic, but she's moving in that direction. Very common for pregnant women. Yeah. So the doctor's like, let me recommend some iron uh, pills for you. And I mean, it's the, the gentle iron and all that stuff. And she right. takes, 
but it's you're like let's eat some steak. But yeah. well, it's not absorbing <laughs> as much. It has to take more of it to get the same impact. Plus, iron supplements cause their own side effects, like constipation. They can cause other issues. So instead, what we're you know what we're doing most days is I'll make her. Uh, organ meats. We make liver. Chicken liver, very high in iron. You know what's funny? She needs less iron from chicken liver to get her iron to stabilize or go up than she does from an iron pill. Like She needs twice as much iron in an iron pill to get her iron levels to respond, hmm. like half as much iron from food, not to mention all the other nutrients and stuff like that. So think of those core exercises like we just talked about as whole foods and everything else is a, is a supplement. Well, really, and, that's the comparison. And a lot of that is why, aside from why they're so great, and, I, and to back to Justin, because I want to make sure we drill this home because there is a camp uh, of you know smart coaches too. A lot of good, there's they're good coaches that are out there that are you know touting other movements besides the squat and the deadlift and telling people like this one activates just as much muscle and you can build just as much quads and that's very appealing to people that you know look at the squat and deadlift and they're intimidated by it or they have a hard time with it and they hear like oh this great intelligent coach that's saying you know you could do a hack squat and build as much muscle as a barbell squat but part of what makes those movements so great is the fucking learning curve is that it's difficult and is that if it, if you're bad at it, it's telling you something. It's telling you that you've got breakdown somewhere, that you've mm -hmm. got areas that you need to work on, whether it be a mobility or an imbalance somewhere that you need to address. And a good goal for everybody should be, even if you can't do those movements, is to get to the place where you can do those movements. That's what makes them so valuable. Anybody can get in a hack squat. Anybody can get in there, put their slide in the, their, their shoulders underneath the machine, unlatch it, and drop down and go back up. Anybody can do that. But what it's hard about something like that is it doesn't show the breakdown. It doesn't expose you. It doesn't. It doesn't have a massive learning curve. It's very easy just to get in and start doing. It. And that's what the the appeal for so many people is. What can I do besides those movements that gives me as much muscle or burns as much calories? And it's mm -hmm. like no, that that's the wrong reason to avoid those movements do those movements if you're not good at those movements figure out how to get good at those movements and you'll get so much bang for your buck you know who's been the, the who has been on the receiving end of that that type of uh, incorrect or uh, inaccurate information the worst women women's workout programs for a long we're starting to see some changes now partially because crossfit popularized these exercises generally but also for women and partially i think because Women uh, obviously are smart and are realizing if I follow the workout that's not that doesn't say specifically for women, I'll probably get better results. But they've been on the receiving end of this bullshit for so long, where you look at these workouts that are designed for women, and there isn't a single deadlift, yeah. a single barbell squat, or a single barbell overhead press or barbell row, and it's like that is terrible. That's mm -hmm. so dumb. You're totally missing out. It's gonna get to your, you're just gonna get to your goals way slower, or maybe never at all. Right.